Today in the show, we're going to be revisiting the history of Billy Kaplan, Wiccan. If you didn't know that he is potentially one of the most powerful magic users in the entire Marvel Universe, then this show is definitely for you. So Billy is actually the oldest of three sons, and while he had a really happy home life, his school life was far from that. He was heavily bullied for being gay. One day, after being beaten up so badly, he was covered in cuts and bruises, he would just be sitting alone, and then Scarlet Witch would come up to him and would begin to comfort him. Keep in mind that he had never had any contact with heroes before this, but Scarlet Witch just happened to be his favourite Avenger. She would tell him to stand up for himself if he can, so the next time he was being bullied, he would actually stand up for himself, but this is where his powers would manifest for the first time as electrokinesis. He didn't know he was a reality manipulator just yet, so he thought he could just use electrokinesis. He would almost kill all of his bullies, so out of fear he would go to the Avengers mansion trying to look for answers, but the Avengers were gone, so he was on his own for a while. But then Iron Lad, a young version of Kang the Conqueror, would come to the past from the future and he would find out about Vision's Avengers failsafe program, where he had specifically selected some kids that had ties to the Avengers, which resulted in them having having superpowers, and Billy was on this list. To begin with, he went by the hero name as Guardian, and he quickly began dating Hulkling. So the first six or so issues of The Young Avengers really didn't focus on Billy all that much. He was kind of a background character in the team for these first six issues. I kind of got the idea that the writers really didn't know what they wanted to do with him, so then towards the end of these six issues, they actually changed his powers. To cut a long story short, Kang's presence in the past began to sort of mess up the time stream which began to alter the future and the present. You see, Iron Lad does have to become evil and become Kang the Conqueror, so the current timeline isn't messed up permanently, which kind of sucks for him because he genuinely wants to be good. So the Young Avengers at first, not really knowing this, are on his side and fight Kang, but then when they realize the truth, they try to force him into the future. During the fight with Kang the Conqueror, Billy actually uses his reality manipulating abilities for the first time by using techniques that he found in his boyfriend's mum's self-help book. This is all sort of like a reference to the secret. Billy basically has the ability to visualize something by repeating a phrase over and over and over again, and he will bring his visualization into reality. Which in itself, in reality, as well as in the Marvel Universe, is chaos magic. After all of this, the Avengers tell the young Avengers to shut down, and they agree to do so for like a day. Kate Bishop goes up to all of them and is like, so I've spent money on getting us a hideout and all new costumes, so you wanna do this? And they all kind of just agree to it. So Billy changes his costume and becomes the hero Wiccan. Billy would actually try telling his parents about what he had been up to, but they misread the whole situation. They actually thought that he was confessing about his relationship with Teddy and they were already calling Teddy their son-in-law. So it was a really sweet moment, just kind of like, not convenient. <laughs> Shortly after this though, the Super Scroll would basically destroy their home trying to kidnap Teddy and it would kill Teddy's mother. Then Teddy would be captured because at this point it's revealed that Teddy is actually half Kree and half Skrull. So this would lead Wiccan and the other young Avengers to look at the failsafe program themselves to try and find out who's on this list. And they would find out about a boy called Tommy. Now Tommy was actually in a detention facility for teenage and young adult superheroes that had caused a mass amount of distress. So they do the obvious thing here and they break him out. And here it's revealed that Tommy looks a lot like Billy. Like they could be twins or siblings. They just look a lot alike. And these two boys resemblance is something I'm gonna touch on in a little bit in this video. Tommy would help the team save Teddy, fight the Kree and the Skrulls. And then he would join the Young Avengers as the hero Speed. Following this, Civil War would come around and the Young Avengers were actually one of the first teams arrested. But Captain America would quickly rescue them. But because they were children, he really didn't want them involved in doing anything. So when the Young Avengers saw the Runaways were actually being targeted by the Registration Act, they wanted to go and save the Runaways, and Captain America was like, no, you can't do that. So the Young Avengers went and did their own thing again. That's kind of their shtick. The issue of the Runaways is, they're just kind of like kids with powers doing their thing, and they don't really have any parental supervision, like they don't have anyone to look after them, so they're trying to figure out life as they go along. So when they see the Young Avengers coming up to them, 
they obviously mistake them for government forces and they don't know why they're being tracked by the government. They don't know about the Registration Act. They're just super confused. The two teams would begin to fight, but Nico Minoru causes everyone to freeze with her powers so everyone can actually talk. And the two teams talk it out and the runaways go into safety and that's where this ends is what I would like to say, but the truth is Marvel Boy turns up, he's completely brainwashed at this point, and he would end up kidnapping Billy, Teddy, and Carolina, and almost kill Zabin. They would become prisoners of the Warden. He installs these electronic devices in Billy's ears, so he can't hear himself, but he can hear everything else. So he can't do any of his spells because he needs to be able to hear himself repeating the same phrase over and over. To torture him, he practices vivisection on his boyfriend in front of him. It was only thanks to Zavin recovering that the two boys got out alive. In fact, Billy got so frustrated here, he even tried to kill the warden out of spite. That's how much he cares about his boyfriend and that's how much this dude is fucked up. And then in the first major battle of Civil War, the Young Avengers were there and Tony Stark personally made the order to shoot Wiccan with a tranquilizer dart, which from a strategic standpoint makes perfect sense. He's a reality manipulator. You need to get them out of the way. From a moral standpoint, Billy was at most 17 or 18 years of age when this happened, so his body was still developing. The tranquilizer darts are kind of made for fully developed bodies, so there was a chance it would have been fatal to him. So this pisses off Captain America. As a response to Captain America being so pissed off, the fight becomes ever more violent and it only ends when the cyborg clone of Thor kills Goliath. He wouldn't be seen again till the end of Civil War, where Hulkling actually uses his shape-shifting abilities to free everyone in the prison so they can take part in the final battle of Civil War. Billy and Tommy would begin to seek answers for their resemblance. The two boys go searching for answers and they find Master Pandemonium, who can tell the boys all about Scarlet Witch and her past and her powers, but he can't tell them where she is now. It is worth mentioning Billy was present during Secret Invasion, but he was more in the background. The story was more about his boyfriend due to his boyfriend's scroll heritage. Doctor Strange would then visit Billy just to let him know that he could be the next Sorcerer Supreme. Like, he's one of the ones in line. Like, it's like right up there, like he's really powerful. Then Hood would turn up, challenge the two to combat. Billy would obviously want to help, but Strange teleports him away so Strange can go and get help from the new Avengers. Then Children's Crusade would come around. Now Children's Crusade is sort of like a peak of the Avengers not really taking the young Avengers seriously and not really listening to Billy. How it all started is one day during a fight, Billy's powers overload. And the last time a reality manipulator's powers overloaded, it was House of M. So the Avengers would want to take Billy in for observation. Side note, is while Billy's actually being taken in by Captain America for observation, that it's confirmed for the first time that Captain America is okay with like gay relationships and gay people. I'm not aware of a time before this where he outright says it. I think it's implied before this, but this is the first time where he says it. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments down below, but I think it's like a really sweet thing. The Young Avengers being the Young Avengers would break Wiccan out of observation because they know that he's gonna have his own plan, which he does. They would go searching for Scarlet Witch, first in Transia, then in Latveria, and they would be joined by Magneto and Quicksilver along the way. And they'd eventually find a Doombot pretending to be Scarlet Witch, which tips them all off to the fact that Scarlet Witch is probably with Doctor Doom. And Billy does the genius thing and goes off on his own. He would find Scarlet Witch without any of her powers or memories, and she was engaged to Doctor Doom. But while he's there, he is attacked by Doctor Doom, who is so much more powerful than him, and Doom temporarily seals away Billy's powers. The next day, Wanda would actually say to Billy, okay, I wanna see what it is you're talking about. If I'm someone, if you know who I am, I want to see it. So Billy would take Wanda outside, but while he was inside, a massive battle between the Avengers and the Doombot army had broken out. And upon going outside, Wolverine would lunge straight for Wanda to try and kill her because he's still pissed off about her taking all mutant powers away. But Iron Lad would then turn up and take the young Avengers and Wanda into the past to see a reanimated Jack of Hearts. Upon seeing him, Wanda regains all of her memories and powers and proclaims that I am Scarlet Witch and I remember everything. The team would return to the present with Scott Lang. Cassie Lang took her father into the future with her because 
Her father died around this time, so this was basically her getting her dad back. And it's here that it's finally confirmed that Billy and Tommy are indeed the reanimated versions of Scarlet Witch's twin children. But here is where I want to talk about their resemblance a bit. So depending on the artist that draws Billy and Tommy, they're either identical or they just look similar. There's like no consistency there, which is fine because if you think about it, it wouldn't make sense for them to be identical. While they are the reanimated twins of Scarlet Witch's children, biologically, they are not Scarlet Witch's children anymore. Billy has his own biological family and Tommy has his own biological family. And in fact, in a later run of The Young Avengers, they even say like, I don't really consider her my actual mother. Like I've got an actual mother and I'm very happy with her. I'm one of the people that feels like it makes less sense for them to be identical. Like yeah, make them look similar. Like the soul would probably have like some kind of influence on how you physically look. But biologically speaking, it wouldn't make sense for them to be identical in a reincarnated life. So back to the story, Wanda's powers are now immense and that's because she has a connection to the life force itself. So when the X-Men turns up, she quickly displays the ability to be able to give mutants their powers back. But she won't be able to do every mutant at once. So her, Wiccan and Doctor Doom all go off to do a ritual to give every mutant their powers back. However, Patriot, being a genius, stops this ritual part way through because he doesn't trust Doctor Doom. But then this ends up transferring the connection to the life force over to Doctor Doom. And then Doctor Doom, being Doctor Doom and having immense power, wants to recreate the entire world in his own image, in his own idea of a utopia. So naturally a massive fight breaks out. And in this fight, he kills Cassie Lang, who had only just got her father back. Following this, he would overload his powers, lose the connection to the life force, and he would just go off on his own. Iron Lad has the idea to go into the time stream to save Cassie, but everyone's like, no, you just, you can't mess with time like that. What's happened has happened. Vision is one of the ones that actually pushes for Iron Lad to stop this. So then now of frustration, Iron Lad would destroy Vision, then go into the time stream and swear to become Kang once and for all. After everything the team went through, they just kind of like decided to disband. Like they couldn't keep fighting anymore in their current state. And this causes Wiccan to become severely depressed. He tries to live a normal life, but that doesn't make him feel any better until eventually his boyfriend proposes to him and he feels a lot better about himself after this. Then after that, Ms. Marvel knocks on their window, calls them to the Avengers mansion and all the remaining young Avengers become fully fledged Avengers. But just because you're an Avenger doesn't mean you're an active hero and the two boys do try to live a normal life for quite some time after this. This would come to a rapid halt after one night the two boys have a disagreement so Billy has the idea to bring an alternate universe version of his boyfriend's mother into reality as a way of reincarnating his boyfriend's mother. But he actually ends up bringing in an interdimensional parasite called Mother. This parasite actually brainwashes every adult in reality into becoming a part of her army. So the boys had no choice but to become heroes once again. This parasite actually only existed because of Loki. You see, Loki actually wants Billy's powers for himself because Billy is destined to become the all-powerful Demiurge, which is like this multi-dimensional mage. He has the idea that if the two boys have to fight mother and he allies himself with them, then there's gonna be a point where he can steal Billy's powers. And the two boys not knowing this, ally themselves with Loki. To cut a long story short, all the young Avengers would end up becoming infected by mother, which means their parents either become a part of mother's brainwashed army or are revived from the dead and become a part of mother's brainwashed army. They manage to banish mother back to her own universe, but they're not able to get rid of the infection and they don't know if it's gonna last their entire lives or if it will eventually wear off. So they decide that they can't ever return home and head off into the universe. During this time, Loki would actually train Billy and how to use his powers a lot more. And then Prodigy from the X-Men would turn up and say that an alternate universe version of Patriot had actually kidnapped Speed. The Young Avengers would end up traveling through the multiverse to try and find Speed and then they'd come into Mother's Dimension. They would all escape with their lives but they would accidentally leave Hulkling and Patriot behind. The two of them would be saved but following this, Hulkling is like, I need some space, Billy, because I don't know if I really love you or if it's your reality manipulating abilities that are making me love you. But what Wiccan really doesn't realize 
is that Teddy's actually being tricked into seeing a person called Leah, who is a counselor, but also an ally of Mother's. This allows Mother to take advantage of the situation, kidnap Hulkling, and unleash evil versions of the Young Avengers across the entire world. The Avengers themselves are brainwashed by this point, so they can't see an issue and they're not fighting back. So the Young Avengers have no choice but to go across the entire world and gather help from every single young adult or teenage hero. But to defeat Mother, Billy's power powers would have to become a lot more powerful. He has to become Demiurge. Thing is, this would happen naturally over time as his body progresses. And Billy was around 19 or 20 years old at this point, and his body needs to be fully developed, so he needs to be about 24, 25. Loki tries aging Billy temporarily, and that really doesn't work, so Billy has no choice but to try and meditate to access this power early. Meanwhile, every teenage hero is fighting the army of Young Avengers, and the Young Avengers are fighting Mother. Once Hulkling had been freed from Mother, he was actually able to go to Billy, comfort him, so then Billy can focus on his meditation, and then he accesses the powers of Demiurge. He actually ends up looking at reality like it's a comic book, and he's able to change anything that he wants to. But the only thing he does is get rid of Mother from reality, like he keeps in all of his own mistakes. And then after the day was saved, the Young Avengers would host a New Year's party, and then they would join the New Avengers. But we're not going to get into that in this video because it's still fairly new. It's on Marvel Unlimited if you want to read it, but I like to give stories some breathing room before I cover them. I love Billy. Billy is my favorite Marvel character. I am Billy. Like, that's the only way I can describe how much influence this character's had on me. A lot of you know this, but I am a working actor outside of YouTube, and one of my biggest goals in terms of my acting career is to play Billy in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, that's one of the reasons I went to acting school. Young Avengers came out, and then shortly following this, I was able to audition for acting school, and I got in, and I really just want to play Billy in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, even if I just get to audition. There's so much that I owe to Billy, but the, what it all comes down to was, for me, seeing Billy was the first time that I saw myself in a comic character, and is the only time I've ever seen myself in a comic character. Like, he's part Jewish, I'm part Jewish. He's a practicing witch, my mother was a witch, and raised me as the family's next witch. And then, of course, there's the fact that we are both gay. I can't say how important it was for me to see Billy, because if I hadn't seen this character that was my age, that was comfortable with being gay, and he was in a stable relationship, and he was able to be so happy, I don't know where I would be right now. And that's kind of weird for me to think about. Like, I came out at a really young age because of Billy. And that's strange to think about. I'm the right age to play Billy as well, like my assistant accidentally leaked my age onto famous birthdays. She didn't know I don't like sharing my age on the internet, but yeah, if you're curious about how old I am, my age is on famous birthdays. You deserve to know if you're searching it off of YouTube onto famous birthdays, like, go for it. <laughs> Okay guys, that is it for today. So what do you think of Billy? Please let me in the comments down below. Is he as important to you as he is to me? Please let me know. But also don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification button, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Patreon, do all of the social links, and I will see you next time.